Hey YouTube, pressing push button one time nothing happens, another time LED is turned on, another time off, one two on, one off, one two on, one off. A special thing about this project is that all the thing that you're seeing here is done completely with hardware and there is no CPU load and no CPU involvement. In this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to use external clock mode 2 capabilities of STM32 timers and using external trigger input pin to count how many times push button is pressed. And you're gonna learn how to use PWM mode 2 capabilities of STM32 timer channels to control LED status based on how many times push button is pressed. Pin PR0 is connected to push button with this debouncing circuit and when push button is not pressed, PR0 is pulled down with 110k and when push button is pressed PR0 is pulled up with 10k LED is connected to pin PR2 with a resistor imagine we have a counter value that is counting how many times push button is pressed its value can be 0, 1, 2 and it cannot be 3 after 2 it's going to be reset to 0 when its value is 0 and 1 I want LED to be turned off and when the value is 2 I want LED to be turned on we have to count how many times push button is pressed and we have to turn the LED on when we're changing counter from 1 to 2 and we have to turn LED off when we are changing counter from 2 to 0 and the way we're going to do that is external clock mode 2 and output compare capabilities of STM32 timers each timer has a counter register CNT register counts from 0 to ARR value ARR is auto reload register Counter value increments by 1 with each rising edge of C cos CNT clock. In STM32 timer, there is a capability called external clock mode 2. With this feature, you can provide C cos CNT clock from an external source. This pin is called ETR, and for timer 2, pin ETR is PR0. With this feature, CNT register counts how many rising or falling edge is on pin ETR and timer can count how many time push button is pressed without any CPU involvement timer CNT register counts how many times push button is pressed I connect the LED to a timer output channel and timer output channel's status changes based on comparison between CCR and CNT and this is how timer turns LED on and off here is our base project with clock configuration I named it counter I'm gonna write a function here with return type of void I named ETR in it input argument is also void I wrote this function in main.c file after main function we want to use PR0 and PR2. The first thing that we're going to do is enable GPIOA clock. RCC, arrow operator, APB2ENR, bitwise or assignment, RCC, APB2ENR, IOPAEN. To enable GPIOA clock, we have to set bit IOPAEN in APB2ENR register in RCC peripheral. Push button is connected to pin PR0 and it's in input float mode. Mode 0 is 0, 0, so we have input mode and CNF0 is 0, 1, so we have floating input. PR2 is connected to LED with the resistor and it's in output alternate function push pull mode. So mode 2 is 1, 0, so we have output mode with max speed of 2 MHz and CNF2 is 1, 0, so we have alternate function output push pull mode. First, we write peripheral name, arrow operator. We want to access CRL register. First, we're gonna clear bits, bitwise and assignment operator with not of bit mask. Here, I write bit mask for all bits of mode 0, CNF0, mode 2, and CNF2. After clearing these 8 bits, we access CRL register another time. In this time, we use bitwise or assignment operator. Here, I write GPIO CRL CNF0 bit 0. This is GPIO configuration for pin PR0 and PR2. PR0 is in input mode and PR2 is in output push pull mode. For timer 2 pins, I don't want to do any kind of remapping. Because with no remap configuration, channel 1 is PR0 and channel 3 is PR2. And I'm gonna use channel 1 and channel 3 of timer 2 timer. So I don't need any remap configuration in AFIO peripheral in map or register. Next step is enabling timer 2 peripheral clock in APB1 ENR register. 
RCC Arrow Operator APB1 ENR Bitwise or Assignment RCC, A RCC APB1 ENR Timer 2 EN When we set this bit, Timer do Peripheral Clock is going to be enabled. To have a upcounting counter, we should clear CMS and Direction bits. Timer 2 Arrow Operator CR1 Register to clear bits, bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask. Then we should write bit mask for the bits that we want to clear. It is timer CR1 DIR bit and timer CR1 CMS bits. Next step is configuring ARR and PSC register. I wanted our counter to count like this 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. And you know counter counts from 0 to ARR register. So ARR register value is 2. Timer 2 arrow operator, ARR register assignment operator. I'm gonna cast it. It is unit 16, 2. Then timer 2 arrow operator, PSC register assignment operator. Then I'm gonna cast it. Unit 16. The value should be 0. Next step is external clock mode 2 configuration in timer 2. These configuration are in SMCR register. First bit that we're gonna discuss is ETP bit. With this bit, you can change ETR pin polarity. If ETP bit is zero, external trigger polarity is not inverted. If it's one, it's inverted. So what it's used for? With ETP pin, you can choose to count on rising or falling edges on ETR pin. I want to count in rising edges and I don't want to invert it, so ETP pin is zero. Next, we have a pre-scaler. We can divide frequency of ETR pin by two, four, or eight, or divide it by nothing. Here, I want to count how many times push button is pressed, so I don't want to divide the frequency by anything. For pre-scaler to be off, ETPS bits should be zero. Timer 2 arrow operator SMCR register for clearing we do bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask first bit that I'm gonna clear timer SMCR external trigger polarity ETP bit I want to clear it then timer SMCR ETPS compile the project we have no error and warning then we have ETF bits for external trigger filter this is a digital filter that helps a lot with debouncing and to have the most powerful filter here all of these four bits should be set to one timer 2 arrow operator SMCR for setting bits bitwise or assignment timer SMCR ETF bits I set them all to one so we have the most powerful filter here Next step is setting bit ECE to enable external clock mode 2 or to enable ETR pin. ECE bit is also in SMCR register and I want to set it. I'm gonna add its bit definition here. Timer SMCR ECE bit. And the last step is enabling the counter by setting CEN bit in CR1 register in timer 2 peripheral. Timer 2 arrow operator CR1 register to set bitwise or assignment with timer CR1 CN bit. Compile the code, add declaration of ETR function before main. Then we're going to call ETR init before while 1. Compile the code and go to debug session. In live expression, write the expression timer2 arrow operator CNT register. Run the code. You can see the project here. Look at timer2 CNT value. If I press push button one time and the value increases by one. Another time two. Another time zero. Zero, one, two. Zero, one, two. Zero, one, two. So we are successfully counting how many times push button is pressed with the max value of 2 starting from 0. And this is done all with hardware with no CPU involvement. Next step is turning this LED on and off based of value of CNT counter of timer 2. Next step is changing LED status based on value of timer 2 CNT counter. To achieve this, I'm gonna use timer 2 channel 3 in PWM mode 2 configuration. An LED is connected to timer 2 channel 3 output with a resistor. This slide explains why we're using PWM mode 2. Counter value is 0, 1, and 2. And imagine if we set CCR3 value to 2. So when counter is 0 and 1 and counter is less than CCR which is 2, output is low. As you can see here, output is low. 
But when counter is 2 and counter is greater or equal to CCR, which is 2, channel output is 1. And this is exactly what we want. When counter value is 0 and 1, we want LED to be turned off and output is 0, output is low. When counter is 2, output is high and LED is going to be turned on. Before setting CEN bit, write timer 2 arrow operator CCR3 assignment, then I'm gonna cast it, and the value is 2. Next step is clearing CC3S bits in CCMR2 register for timer 2. So channel 3 would be in output mode. But before that, because we have to enable preload for channel 3, we have to set CC3S bits because it can't be in output mode initially when we're enabling preload. Timer 2, arrow operator, CCMR2, bitwise or assignment, timer, CCMR2, CC3S. Then timer 2, arrow operator, CCMR2, bitwise or assignment, timer, CCMR2, OC3P, control space, OC3PE, and preload is enabled. Then timer 2, CCMR2, now bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask. By clearing bit CC3S, channel 3 is going to be in output mode. Next step is putting channel 3 in PWM mode 2. To achieve this, we have to configure bits OC3M in CCMR2 register. And all these three bits have to be set to 1. So we have PWM mode 2 as our configuration for channel 3 in timer 2. Timer 2, arrow operator, CCMR2, bitwise or assignment, timer, CCMR2, OC3M, OC3M bits. So all these three bits are set to 1. Next step is configuring polarity for channel 3 with CC3P bit in CCER register. I want polarity to be active high, so CC3P should be cleared in CCER register. Timer 2, arrow operator, CCER, bitwise and assignment with not of bit mask, timer, CCER, CC3P. Then to enable channel 3, we have to set bit CC3E in timer 2 CCER register. I copy this line, paste it here, instead of bitwise and, I write bitwise or assignment, and instead of CC3P, I write CC3E. Compile the code again, we have no error and warning. I have to make a correction here. For PO2 to be in output alternate function push pull mode, mode 2 and CNF2 both should be 1 0. CNF2 should be 1 0, so I add a definition here for CNF2 bit 1. Compile the code again and go to debug. Run the code. You can see the project here. Pay attention to the value of CNT register and now I press the button. 1. As you can see, CNT is 1. Another time CNT is going to be 2 and LED is going to be turned on. As you can see LED is turned on and the value of CNT is 2. Another time and CNT is going to be 0 and LED is going to be turned off. Turned off and value of CNT is 0. 1, 2, on. 1, off. 1, 2, on. 1, off. 1, 2, on. 1, off. As you can see we are counting and comparing pulses without any CPU involvement 